In Joe Robinson's book, Melatonin, Your Body's Own Wonder Drug. It's called Melatonin, Your Body's Own Wonder Drug. In that book, they tell you it took a thousand, or how many, how many was it? A thousand five hundred cows to make ten grams of pineal extract. That ain't, that's less than an aspirin. They can't do it. It's coming from humans. And when they went to row one and killed all the people in the row one, they ain't got to get it from y'all niggas no more. They go to the African continent. You get it from, uh, uh, and, you know. So they, uh, so Carrie, the same guy that you crying to think he's going to deliver you, he gets off on eating the brains of black people. But yet, you still have faith in these dogs on cry. Not you in here, because I don't want to talk down on you. Y'all know better. I'm hoping. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So now, y'all right? Okay. So, anyway, this is the Carrie person. Now, it's interesting here that uh, this sister that Dr. Charles Finch brought to the Mohais Medical School was the high priest of voodoo in, in she was from Togo. Was it on? Was it, was, it, was it on the first one? Was the first one on? Okay, okay. Whew. All right. I just want to know. I didn't know y'all was over discussing some shit, you know. <laughs> this was the high priest of voodoo. She was born in this thing from Togo. And they read, and she said that um, they got a potion over there. They rub on a woman's hand, and she can get any nigga she want. They be lining up. I said, man, I'll make a million dollars if I get that potion. <laughs> but I got something just as good. This baby right here, I'll show you how this works in a few minutes. You might want to get this. <laughs> get your man going. I believe that every black woman should be in love. That's just the way the things will, should be in love. But you don't, don't cry because if you had somebody that's died that you was in love with, you can still be in love with them. At this particular time, if you had somebody that died on you, that you've been in love with, like the love of your life, and they've been gone, and they're in the spirit world, do you know that you can, you can tap back into that shit and be in love? Because the love you're thinking is always on the inside of you. We'll go into that in a few minutes, you see. Now, but you can't be scared. <laughs> now, the woman from Togo who was born in there, she said that they, they got a ritual they do for anything over there. And when it comes to healing, and so she was doing and all that. So somebody at the Mohawk, we went to go visit. We went there in October to see this woman. And so somebody asked the question, well, what about AIDS? You know what this woman said? This woman was in her late 40s or early 50s. She said in her entire life of living in divining in the spirit world, she has never seen anything called AIDS. She said, now they have diagnosed, there have been people that came to her that was diagnosed with AIDS, but they always have something else. But she said she has never seen in the spirit world anything called AIDS. It's a hoax. And they kill you with AZT or whatever. Now we got it from the spirit world, she said, in her whole life. And she, been in this, she was born into the society as a little girl. No such thing. She said everybody that she has ever that ever came to her diagnosed with AIDS had something else. Huh? Acquired. Acquired. But I'm just trying to say it's all a hoax. You dying from something, they dying from the cure. They just straight out killing them and calling it AIDS is what she's saying. You see what I'm saying? Is 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 what she's saying. Which <clears throat> leads us to this. Okay. We, I went to an Egyptian exhibit, a Camite exhibit in Atlanta this summer. This go back with what, what, what um, Atiba was talking about. In that exhibit, they had a mummy, a priestess of Het Heru, and they had a doorway, a little white limestone doorway, limestone doorway. And as a result, they said the doorway is walled up. It is not made for you to go through physically, it's for you to go through astrally. So we looked into the doorway and projected ourselves in it. And as a result, we start cleaning out. I start getting the hives, became allergic to soy, because soy shuts down melanin. 
They got whole shit on soy allergies popping up all over the United States. Even Nexus Magazine ran an article last month. You just got to get, if you, you go, go online, because if it's gone, you go online to Nexus Magazine and you can pull up the, the previous articles. And the soy allergies. I came allergic to soy. And because what happened was, is when, when I went in there, the, 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 whatever the entity in me was, was started, was activated through that doorway when I went through. And so when he started coming through, or it started coming through, it couldn't take the soy, because that shit shut down the melanin. You see what I'm saying? Well, because what's happening here is, so I, talk to, so I, I was talking to the sister, Dr. Ann Brown, lives up in, and he was at a melanin conference. I said, so what's going on? She said, well, it, there's the organic soy, but most of the stuff that you get in these things that's mass produced is uh, synthetic in the particular aspect that it makes them, in the words, they grow. It's, it's done by a synthetic soybean, which means it's uh, genetically grown soybean. And as a result of genetically grown soybeans, that's why you're coming down with food allergies, because, you know, um, what's the name made over, what, a hundred and something items of, uh, uh, from soybean? George Washington Carver. You see, but you make plastic with that. And, that, and so what it is, so, and now if you go and look in all the products, if you go, let's say if you go to the store and you see the genetic, let's say if you go in there and you see some Miracle Whip, just giving an example. Some Miracle Whip some good shit. I don't give a damn. <laughs> a sandwich ain't a sandwich without some Miracle Whip. <laughs> sandwich just ain't a damn sandwich. But you'll see Miracle Whip and you'll see, for you people, I'm, I know you died, but I'm talking about, you, I'm trying to show you something. If you're going to eat something, always eat the most expensive. That's why white folks don't get sick. You'll see Miracle Whip and then you will see salad dressing by whatever store, Pathmark, down in there, it's Kroger, the generic brand. If you look on the back, the Miracle Whip won't have the soy protein in it, but the cheap one will. They got this soy protein in everything. You see what I'm saying? About like the high fructose corn syrup that is even in ketchup at McDonald's. They put it in ketchup at McDonald's. That's why you got to get, there's a movie called Super Size Me. About to see this shit? You see, y'all see this movie? It's a movie about a guy that went on to McDonald's for a month. He had a healthy, he had one of the healthiest bodies in America as far as white folks go. He went on McDonald's for one month and did super, only McDonald's. And at the end, not only he was addicted to it, he had to have McDonald's. And not only that, his liver was damaged. And it took him almost a year and a half to get his body back in order, but they say he had permanent damage to his liver and shit. And they got McDonald's now in fucking hospitals. Get the movie Super Size Me. And they say they put high fructose corn syrup in the ketchup. That's why you so and they put the sugar on the fries. You know McDonald's fries is hell. Now remember I was telling you so, uh, remember I was so, so the, the soy that they're giving you, the one that everybody is using, it's, they got, it's, it's in everything, but it's synthetically grown, and so therefore it fucks up the melanin, and that's why the white boy can put it in everything. What's that? That's the soybean they got now that uh, is genetically, so it won't, uh, it's like, it fights the Roundup, like the Roundup can't kill the soybean. Well, okay, and, what, and they yeah. All, they, the, the, the farmers can only... Buy soybean. They can't reproduce. Can't, can't, can't. Well, remember, I was right. Remember, I was telling you about the sugar cane, and the guy showed me the sugar cane down in, in Texas, and the sugar cane was as big as a, a magic marker. It was about this much big around, big as a dime around. And I'm like, hell, my, the sugar cane I used to eat growing up in Mullins was big as a Kennedy 50 cent. But, and yet, they, they said, if you come with that sugar cane to the factories, they reject it. You, they won't buy it from you. You can only come with the hybrid one that's that big, that is genetically modified. So now they got genetically modified soy, and it started, whatever it was, every time I eat it, my lips swole up, looking like Bubba. <laughs> then my face swole up and all this, because that entity was like, this is the shit that's blocking the melanin. 
This is the stuff that's blocking the melanin. And all the vegetarians is in on it and stuff. Because we tofu champions. I, I used to be a vegetarian. That was my shit. And that's plastic. You see what I'm saying? And why is you go to the, even when you go to the, you go to the supermarket, why is it when you go to the health food store now, you will see organic soy sauce and organic ter teriyaki sauce. So that means that obviously, but they're putting this stuff in everything. You see what I'm saying? They put, they, they're putting this stuff in everything, and it's blocking the melanin. Very key that you understand that. Y'all all right? Okay, let's go on. We got a lot of things to cover. Let's see where we're going to go from here. Um, okay, so, just, so, so also, remember now, no flu shots, because that shuts down the kidneys. And I told people in 98 they was giving people diabetes. Now, how the hell, when we was growing up, the only person who had the diabetes was born with it. Then around the 80s, they came out with type 2. <laughs> and they was giving people the diabetes. And I told the people that in 1990. And, uh, and then not only that, they got a cure for diabetes, but they won't give it to the people. But they were giving the people the diabetes. And I'm going to drop on this in a few seconds to tell you what all this is about. <coughs> And they're shutting down the kidneys. That's why you got a football field. See, it's the diet. Well, I want to ask you something. You go to the black, you, you, go in the, you go in the black community, and they have to take shifts. It'd be enough people in the big as a football field. They got to take shifts in small towns. Now, but there won't be no white people in the diet. It's the diet. Well, why? we learn all the hog and all that shit from white folks. And I'm saying they got white folks that's got better nutrition in the major cities, but them crackers down there, down south, is still put the oint in the hog. And they not, they not in the, and they are not in the dialysis places. It ain't that. They're shutting down the kidneys. They're shutting it down through, number one, going to the doctor, number one, flu shots, and number one, when you go in there, they did my mama. My mama went up in there. And they just went in the room. She said she saw, she didn't tell us until about a month later. She said they walked in the room, took her IV, stuck something in it, and shut down her damn kidneys. <laughs> but she took the slew shot and came allergic to her own damn house. And she been in the house, been living in the house for forty something years. No, for sixty years, damn near, because of the, uh, uh, because her, her daddy, uh, my, her daddy built it, my granddaddy built it when she was a child. But yet she allergic. So. So now, they're giving people the diabetes. Now, how we know? They fucked around and gave some rich white folks diabetes by mistake. Because what they did was they got an antidepressant called Zyprexia. And it's an antidepressant. You know white folks is in all that antidepressant. So they gave them the Zyprexia. And these white folks came down with pancreatitis and type 2 diabetes. So they, get, and, and so they, get, they gave them a cash settlement. They got a, they've been running it all last month, all the last three months on A&E, the History Channel, and all that, saying if you have had Zyprexia, you can give us cash settlement. For, and they said type 2 diabetes and pancreatitis. I said, there it is right there, damn it. If they gave it to them by mistake, what you think they're doing to you? They give you that shit. Why? Because we go to the fucking hospital and find out who got more diabetes. Is it males or females? I guarantee you it'll be females because you're the ones that park your ass up in a hospital. <laughs> well, see, the high blood pressure medicine shuts down the kidneys also. Now, what is this thing about shutting down the kidneys? Because we're going to get into this because everything here is a battle for your heart Chakra. Now, what is shutting down the kidney? You need to get this book, Open Another Way, by Isha Schwaller the Lubitz. Still in print. This is the older copy. The Opening of the Way, by Isha, I S H A, Schwaller, S C H W A L L E R, the Lubitz. D E L U B I C Z. Don't ask us. You can come up and get it when we go to the break. But this is for the, you spell it for the camera. Now, in here, they tell you one thing. First of all, went to D.C. last year, I did a tape call. Now, first of all, I'm going to tell you, I did a tape call, the love tape. 
Babylonia 1, I just did Babylonia 2. I'm getting ready to start. I'm a, I got to clear it up some, you know, but I give it Babylonia thing. And people are getting this tape and falling in love and having all kind of spasms and all kind of shit. Because it was the spirit that came through me when I did it. And so it's called Babylonia, the mysteries of love and sex. Got to get it. It's a, dyna, it's, it's a world masterpiece. The other one is called Babylonia 2, the future, love of, future of love and sex. And it's out of this world. We'll get into that in a few minutes. But anyway, I was in D.C. about a year ago, and I did this lecture, uh, a thing called Black Mental Illness. We got Black Mental Illness 1 through 3 now. We're going to get three, 3 out soon uh, for the public. So I was up there, and I did this, and I said, I think that our people are on some kind of motor-like regimental thing. It's like the people out in the street are being controlled by this regimental type thing. It's like they can't take a break from whatever they control. It's like a, and the guy said, automation. I said, that's it. Automation. It's like they got a machine. You be like, because you know, you, it'd be about a couple of months before you meet somebody that you don't already know conscious. You might meet a new conscious person every two months, and you can't talk to nobody in your damn family. Them fools is gone. <laughs> Them fools has been gone. So, I'm saying it's automation. So, I get up, so I come back to D, come back from DC, go down to the used bookstore, and I look, I said, damn, I used to have that book, and I don't have it no more. I don't know what happened to it. I said, somebody might have stole it or something. I don't know. So, I got it for five bucks. It's a used copy. And I go home, and, I, and, 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 and what happened? The spirit will just take it and turn to the page. And it turned to this page where it talked about the three different types of car. One is called the, and the car is the different levels of melanin, because it's called the shadow. And they said, that, and it's intelligence, and it says there's three types of car. One is called the, uh, there's three types of car. One is called the animal car. One is called the inferior car, and one is called the divine car. Now, all conscious people, you operating from the divine car, which means your energy is operating from the heart chakra. And that's the reason why you can get this, and you are in here on a Saturday night, but you can go and go to your brother or somebody and try to tell them the same thing, and they can't get it. And some of your people is highly educated. You say, well, I didn't go to school, and you went to school, and you try to tell them this, and they can't get it because it ain't got nothing to do with education. That's training. Real education is not allowed. Now, anybody up in here that went to college, I went for eight years. Now, tell me, did you get any damn education out of that shit? No, you got to train for whatever syllabus they told you and test you got to pass to get that certification. But you didn't get no damn education. That's why you up in here now. Now, anyway, now anybody, I'll challenge anybody on that shit. And if you did read a goddamn book on some stuff in college, you read it by yourself. But it wasn't because of no course requirements. You lying. You got trained. You see, that's why he tell you get a good education. Because he can bake on that shit. And it's something that fucks our mind up when we get it. We ain't never the same no more. You see what I'm saying? I, I wonder why I couldn't read till the seventh grade. They was protecting my ass. It wasn't because I was dumb. I just was an artist. And all I did is sit in the back of the class for seven years and drew. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the only reason why I had to learn how to, I learned how to read it that damn a week. Because they passed the book around, and when you read on a fourth grade level in the seventh grade, and the motherfuckers laughing at you, I had to learn how to read. And guess what? I don't know how to this day how I learned how to read. It was a spirit that just woke up. And all you're doing is drawing something out. You see what I'm saying? But anyway, in here... They talk about the, you are uh, operating from the heart chakra, which is the divine car. That's why you conscious. Your other people are operating from what is called the inferior car or the animal car. And the inferior car and the animal car is called automaton, which is automation. They can only be driven by the society. And what is programmed in based on the greater society. But they can't get this because their energy and their consciousness is in their root chakra and up to their navel chakra. And your consciousness is in your heart chakra. Now, let me explain this to you because this has a lot to do with your kidneys. Now, try to understand this because I went through this. Some of you people right now could do work all day long and 
nothing and then go to sleep at night and your heart about to beat out your chest and you get scared. Then you, oh, I'm having heart palpitations. You go to the doctor and they can't find nothing wrong. That is because you have what is called your regular heartbeat and everything down there has a regular heartbeat. Even the rats and the roaches or whatever. The animal that runs the planet. But there's a divine heartbeat that comes from the spirit realm of the underworld. And that divine heartbeat, once you become conscious and your heart chakra starts to develop over the course of years of knowledge and just seeking, and now it's being accelerated, this stuff is happening to you now. So what happens here is it cancels out your regular heartbeat and you start being, your heartbeat is being taken over by another entity. So your heartbeat is coming from a divine heartbeat that's coming from the underworld or the inner world and it's your, so in so many words, your soul has a heartbeat. But your soul is a dormant and asleep. So you are being, so most people are being run on what is called a regular animal of the earth. And most people's soul is dormant. But when your soul starts to wake up, what it does is it, it has another heartbeat that's a faster rate, and it cancels out your old heartbeat, and you become Superman, Superwoman, heart palpitations. Your blood pressure becomes higher. Now, as a result, as a result, you become unbreakable like that brother right there got hit, got run over by that damn car, hit his ass. The point I'm trying to say he is. The point I'm trying to say here is so that it's unbreakable. You know, like I get cut on the hand, and then a week later, in about four, two days later, it's healing. In a week, it's done healed. Now, the mystery here is they know that they say that the heart chakra or the heart in this book, Isha de Lubitz, it has a symbiotic nature with the kidneys. So when the divine heart comes in, it regulates to the kidneys, and the kidneys start sending water, hormones, or whatever the kidney sends through the body to regulate the new cells and generate this new God body. You understand what I'm saying? Because it has a symbiotic nature. So what they got to do is they got to shut down the kidneys you see, to somehow retard the heart chakra because the entity of the invasion of the alien is coming from the heart. You ever see Jesus holding the little heart? Yeah. The heart chakra is the Jesus, the Horus, the Buddha. There is no man out there. It's inside of you. The apocalypse of the heart is all based on the heart. What it really is, is a woman that sets up in there. That's why when your heart chakra opens up, it's a woman that sets in everybody's heart. And it judges the women because y'all don't like women. Can't stand that bitch. And it, and it judges the men because men are trained not to like women in a, in a, in a certain eerie way. You know what I'm saying? In, in, you see what I'm saying? So. It's, it's a judgment that's going on, you see. Now, what's happening here is they are shutting down the kidneys with the high blood pressure medicine and with all this other stuff, and it's all, it's, and, and the dialysis and all this stuff that they're dealing with here and shutting all this down to try to stop the heart chakra from emitting a certain wavelengths to the kidneys, and the kidneys taking that and transforming these hormones throughout the body, and you becoming God, man. That's what this shit is about. That's why niggas is in the dialysis by the thousands, and yet if you go, you go back 30 years ago, there was no such thing. Do the math. That's what's going down, you see. So they're trying to stop, but still, yet yeah, you are unbreakable, because guess what? If you are operating from the heart chakra, you have already sur surpassed that. Now, how many people got diabetes? Because we can heal that, too, by you, 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 you doing a certain thing. First of all, you got to get you some spirits. <laughs> then you got to call on a certain amount of entities. We'll go in that uh, in a few minutes. 
For now, moving right along. Y'all all right? Yeah. Moving right along. Okay. How many people saw the movie Ray? Okay. It's a great movie. But just remember now, the white man didn't put the movie out because he loved Ray Charles. He put the movie out because most black people in the country didn't know Ray Charles had a drug problem. Know this. He didn't put it out because of the love of Ray Charles. You understand what I'm saying? But he did a great movie anyway because we know that the ancestors, when they die, since there is no mystic, that ain't nothing up there but a holographic universe, Michael Talbot's book, Holographic Universe. And there ain't no heaven and hell because they tell you this hell and this heaven will go away. But they tell you where is heaven? It's within. So where do the ancestors go when they die? They go to live inside of you. That's why when Ray kicked his drug habit, he went back and visited his mother who had passed on and his brother who died early. They were right there. And they told him that we were always with you. They are inside of you. They're, so it's microscopic organisms, and they are inside of you. That's where your mother, and that's why the Africans say, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm built on the heels of the ancestors. I stand on the heels of the ancestors. But why wouldn't they study mitochondrial DNA? They study your whole ancestral tree based on that because that is not because of a lineage. It's because the ancestor shit is all inside of you. It's inside of the melanin. That's where they live. That's why you start, have, when you have dreams, they come and visit you. They living inside of you. You see, now you understand this too about, now this has something to do with the lover. Whenever you make love to a person, you mix your energy with a person. That person is always a part of you. That's why some women, they used to go, and it's a spirit thing. And he, he, I, you know, they say, you know, I wanna, want you to come in my mouth. I'm, I'm talking to you as students. Now, I don't want you to get off, because see, I have to say this and stuff, because our people are, uh, what I'm trying to say is this here. White folks study everything. You see what I'm saying? We come amongst you. Now, if I, if I was a white professor and I said, you know, I want you to ejaculate in my mind, you would buy it and all because you didn't pay money for this course and all. But see, he has the authority to set the standard of what you call the criteria of being right. By me being a black man, you think that nigga crazy. So the women say, I want you to come in my mind. I say, why? Because I will always have a part of you. I've heard some women say this shit. You see what I'm saying? I always want to have a part of you. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, I've heard, I heard some women say that before. Anyway, you mix your essence with when you make love to a person. Now. If you was ever in love, there's a certain amount of alchemical nature that happened. And when that person come, dies, especially now, a lot of people now are tapping into, you'll be in the bed and all of a sudden you'll remember an old love that something happened 30 years ago. And you don't know where it's coming from. That's because that person is able to be a part of you and they're able to travel to different gateways. So you can tap back into that because number one, the love is inside of you in the first place, but that person's essence is with you. So we're talking about a whole ecological system that is just not on the physical, which is the illusionary and that there is the real world and all this stuff is coming back into play. So we're talking science here. You see what I'm saying? We're not talking about no wade in the water and all that old gang shit. So now, dealing with this and all, they go to Stay inside of you. They could go to live inside of you. There was a whole book called Demons of the Inner World. And in that particular book, they, 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 they talk about, well, what is this? There's a chapter called Dead Persons in One's Head. And they're talking about these energies that live inside of you. And that's what Ray experienced. And they, his mama said, we were always with you. And so one thing the movie did, that was the most metaphysical thing in the movie. But they gave it up on that. Y'all all right? OK. Uh, okay, then. Uh, how many hours that been? <laughs> that been? 
That's been three hours already? You lying. Oh, Lord. So you want to take a little break right quick? Well, what I want to do is, is now I want to, because, you know, what I want to do is, okay, I tell you, well, you ain't got to take no break. But I want to, I want to get you time to get these pictures, the people who want to get them, before we do the lecture y'all get on out of here and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little 10-minute thing, and the people who want to access these pictures, you come on up in 10 minutes, and, and, uh, and we got a little bit of DVDs left for the people. the tower. Mm. Stole two at the hotel and didn't bring none <laughs> when I was in Detroit. <laughs> Dang. Okay, now let's give out this, uh, Let's give out this, this ritual. Now this ritual, if, you, if, if, if you're about to go to court, and you want to fare better, you do this ritual. If you're on probation, and you want to fare better and stuff, do this ritual. If you're going to do a job offer, if you're going to uh, go for a job, do this ritual. If you're going to a business transaction, do this ritual. If you want to attract some, you know, steamy romance, do this ritual. This ritual could do just about anything because this is a ritual that generally cleans the aura. And by cleaning the aura, by cleaning the aura, you basically can attract what you want. But, but okay, so I'm, um, you can attract what you want. But what I was trying to say, the reason why I was trying to tell you to get this before I do that, is this. Everything is up here for a meaning. When I went to the museum and I stared into the doorway and I started cleaning out and all, I said, man, I wish I could get something like that for the people, a doorway. And, and the spirit said, you already got it. You've had it for years. And that is a picture of the Temple of Dendera. And they said, because it's a black doorway, if you say, if you get the people and they could get the picture and display it in their home and stare into the doorway and project what they want into the doorway, you can get what you want based on you projecting in the doorway, just like I astro projected, I projected my thoughts into the doorway in the museum. The reason why it's so important now to get this, and I say, well, why not before, is because Venus was not activated. They talk about in mythology there will be a sleeping Venus in the future that will wake up. Well, when the Venus transit on 666, June 6, 2004, 2 and 4 is 6, the Venus woke up. So the temple of Het Heru, or Hathor, is also the goddess Venus in Rome, Aphrodite in Greece. Anana in Samaria, Babylonia, no, not, not Babylonia, um, Ishtar in, Babylonia, in Babylon, and Lakshmi in India. But I, these things are used for different frequencies. Her Heru said that picture can do the same thing. If they focus in an astro projected into the picture. Uh, basically what you do is you focus into that do doorway. And anything black, you can pretty much create what you want into it. And you focus into it, you can go and project what you want and you can get what you want back. That's the reason why they asked me to do the actual picture. But they came and said, well, if you set up the top of the ceiling of Dendera, I have the, and the actual picture of how it looks on the inside, you can create this whole dimensional temple 
and you can uh, project your mind all around the temple. So that's the reason why we have these also. Now, that's why we have those also. That's why I said it was important to get that. Now, the other thing is this. About, about 10 years ago, a brother was about to be sent to jail by some pro probation officer, because this probation officer, the racist cracker, did, hated him. And he said, I don't know what to do. So somebody told me to go get a spiritual bath. And the guy said, when I give you the spiritual bath, when you go before him on Monday, he won't even recognize you. So he took the spiritual bath and went before the cracker on Monday. The cracker said, who are you? End of story. So I said, man, I wish I could get a hold to that spiritual bath. And I was telling the people about the spiritual bath in New York in May, and my new queen said, hell, I, I got that ritual. I had it for a couple of years. I said, well, shit, let's get it. So that ritual consists of, and it can do anything. Like I said, this pretty much ritual is a, you'll see in most ritual books, they'll have one that say, pretty much do what you want with it. This one, you get your, you, you run your tub of water, you want three caps of bleach, three caps of vinegar, three caps of, of, of um, three caps of vinegar, three caps of bleach, um, three caps of lemon juice, and three caps of ammonia. So that's three caps of ammonia, three caps of lemon juice, three caps of bleach, and three caps of, of, of uh, 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 vinegar. And you take it and you put it in the bath water. You run your good tub, put it in the bath water, and then put a half a cup of sea salt in there. Then you burn your candle to your liking. Because you might, certain times certain colors pop up for certain reasons. So you burn your candle to your liking, and then you, you go in it, you go no less than 15 minutes. You can go longer, but no less than 15 minutes. And then go up under the water with your head, put your whole head in it, and you get up and you shower off. Then you take a piece of that candle and you put it in a something, a container or something or whatever, plastic bag or pouch or whatever, and you carry it on your person. And pretty much what you want will actually manifest because you've cleaned your aura. But here goes again. We start calculating on the physical level. But bleaching this and that and all that and it's spiritual. You see what I'm saying? Because you know, because you start calculating, oh, well, this is my, I'm a legend, now I'm a, no, it's spiritual. You see what I'm saying? It's spiritual. Look, let me show you something. Y'all all right? Here's a book they just came out with called Hoodoo and Herb Magic. Hoodoo and Herb Magic by Catherine, K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E, -E, Catherine, this word, Y-R-O-N, W-O-D-E, Y-R-O-N, W-O-D-E, and it says, a materia magica of African-American conjure. So this is a book that's got all the stuff that we've been doing, your, your, your grandparents and your great-grandparents was doing. They got a book to chronicle all that stuff. What does black pepper do? What does this do? What does that do? And it's a book called Hoodoo and Herb Magic. It's bad. Get that book. Hoodoo and Herb Magic by Catherine, what's that word? Y-R-O-N-W-O-D-E. Hoodoo and Herb Magic. Hoodoo, H-O-O-D-O-O, -O -O, and Herb, Hoodoo, Herb, and Root Magic. Hoodoo, Herb, and Root Magic. I got it from Chicago, but you can... I'm not from here, so what does it make it? It's not as if that you know. Pretty much, you can pretty much get anything you want now, if you got on the, either on the internet or whatever. You can get anything. Amazon or wherever they can order this stuff. But this is the book you want, huh? Y R O N W O D E W Y R O O N W O D E. Now, so you want to get that. Now, the other one, okay, so, I, I, so you could pretty much get 
what you want, and that particular one now, you, you want to do that particular spiritual bath, and that, that, that particular spiritual bath. Now, the ones who bought this Lakshmi, if you display her up in your house on an altar with some gold, uh, go either go down to the, you don't have to have, I know we, you know, you take, sacrifice one of your little gold chains and shit. You know, you got a lot of that stuff. Sacrifice you some gold chains and go, you can go down to the, go down to the, uh, go down to the bank and get those gold coins they came out with in 2000. There was gold dollar bills. There was gold looking dollar bills with a little woman on it, a little Native American woman on it. Get some of them and put on that altar and then be creative. The more gold and the more gold colored things you put on the altar, the more and more prosperity will come. But now, now she don't want you to do it just for money. She wants you to do it for prosperity on several levels. Prosperity is not just monetary. It's health and she wants you to correspond with her and feed her. Because this is the energy that's permeating. So you people for $5, You'd be surprised what you can do. And I'm not, and people now, people who bought this stuff in Atlanta and go, hey man, last minute, I didn't hit the lottery. Last year been hooking shit up. You know, I said, well, motherfucker, you need to break me off some, but <laughs> but anyway, that's what's that's 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 what's going down. Y'all all right? Okay, y'all all right. So look, I'm gonna give this to you so you can um get to work on trying to blow that picture up. And so we can and try to enhance it and stuff so we can get that going. It's on like the second or third page or whatever of that book and all, so we can get that going. Y'all all right? Okay. Now, let's see here. Where we going? Um, get this book, Rule by Secrecy. Rule by Secrecy, Jim Mars. This is the best one. The definitive text on the people who rule your lives, Illuminati, Skull and Bones, or whatever. Get this particular book. It's interesting here in this book, Rule by Secrecy. This book was hard back in 2000. Now it's only $16. It was like 20 something. Uh, but it, it, so now it's only $16. But I want to read something to you right here. And this is what it says. It says, um, I want to read this to you. Yet despite the length and the breadth of the information secret highway, of the information highway, excuse me, and the average American remains woefully ignorant. That is not to imply that they are stupid or materially challenged, but they simply do, are not exposed to the information now available. Many thoughtful, educated people in various variety of fields, physicians, lawyers, computer experts, stockbrokers, accountants, bankers, merchants, and scientists, teachers, etc., are totally in the dark about a wide, variety of issues and concerns between them and concerning who actually rules the United States. Uh, 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 who actually rules the, rules the United States. The primary cause of their ignorance is not, is, is all a lack of time to educate ourselves. It's called a job. It's called a career. You can't educate yourself and study the appropriate amount of stuff because you work all the time. And the people who rule your lives don't work at all. You see. And you, yeah, and so and, and it's interesting you said about watching TV and it says, or to educate ourselves, or the reliance on corporate own mass media that does not present the information in all its broadcast implications, i.e., J. Lieberling once said, freedom of the press is for those who own the presses and the radio stations. And also, in so many words, they say, we are, we are in a society that gives you a sanitized Disney view of America. And so it's a form of mind control. And in this book, he, he breaks it down, but this is the book that brings, takes it all the way into the occult and what they are behind. Now, which gives us this. I was talking to Walter Williams. That's the brother who wrote the book 
um, uh, Historical Origins of Christianity. He got a new one out called Historical Origins of Islam. And I know, he know, uh, I know he knows what he's talking about because I got a lot of the books. And if you get any of the books from the turn of the century in the 1800s, they never say the word Islam. They say Muhammadism. He goes on to say that Islam was created by the Jews in the late 1800s. The word Islam. The people never call it Islam. They call it Muhammadism. And in so many words, now, and I know he's talking about because his thing here is that Islam itself is an invention by the Jewish state. Now, I know he know what he's talking about because there's also too. Albert Churchward in his book, Evolution, Origin of Christianity, when they go on the, ask, go, go on the, on the aspect of, of Islam, he said that Muhammad or whatever this person was used to hang out with a bunch of Jews. And as a result, this is what created this. Now, I want to show you what's going on here. If you are some Hebrews and you want your uh, religion to have legitimacy, knowing there's ancient Kemet, ancient India, ancient Samaria, which is also Northeast Africa, because all these are new names, Samaria, Chaldea, uh, Babylon, and all that shit is names to cover up the fact that it's Northeast Africa. You see, when they went to when they went to war in Babylon, see, you got to think for a minute now. They actually went to war in a portion of Africa that hadn't been excavated. There's 1,000 dig sites in Iraq since the war. And they give you that fake shit and blowing up everything and all this, and they over there digging up the thing and then emptied out the whole museum, trying to save themselves. That's what this shit was ultimately about. You see what I'm saying? What's that? Blade Trinity. They went to they, they, the Dracula. They was trying to find who was supposed to be the most powerful bloodline. They 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 dug up his thing in Iraq. In Iraq, one of the goddess that was supposed to, that that one of the goddess that they were trying to find is the goddess Ishtar from Babylon, which Babylon now is Iraq. They were looking for Ishtar. Now, this is the most beautiful thing about it is Ishtar did show up, but she didn't show up in Iraq. She showed up in America on May 15th, 2003. That's when the Matrix, uh, the second Matrix, Matrix Reloaded came out. Seven deities came out. Seven Hathars. It's called Seven Hathars or Seven Ishtars. But they came with new names. And her new name was Ishtar. I-S-H-T-A-H. Ishtar, Monu, Noku, Mana, Enmatu, Titi, and Jova. These are seven primal African deities, or ancient deities, that came back to the planet. And they was over there trying to dig up some stuff to tap into her energy, and we got the shit over here. Seven Ishtars, seven half hours. So now, that's Northeast Africa. You got to get out of these names, Samaria, Babylonia. They talk about this cuneiform text that's supposed to be older than Metanetta. Bullshit. Come to find out, Walter, I was talking to Walter Williams. Walter Williams said that he's been studying, and they said that they, they created that shit at the University of Chicago. Because how it is they're getting the whole history off of some little clay tablets. You can't get the whole history of Kemet in massive buildings. And they're getting the whole history of Samaria and all the mythology on some little clay tablets. They say they created that shit. They created them tablets right at the University of Chicago in the last century, the 20th century. But anyway, let's say you Hebrew and you want your shit to stand. It stands the reason that you got to get other cultures to give you their brand of Hebrewism. So, uh, Babylon, Mecca, and all that later on, especially Mecca and Saudi Arabia, which is Northeast Africa, the Jews come up with this Islam, and then later on the Christians come up with Christianity, and the Jews is laughing because the first books of the Quran and the first books of 
The Bible is all goddamn the Old Testament. Now, come on now. Let's not be stupid with this mess. You can't have the angel Gabriel to come to visit Muhammad, and he happened to be a damn Hebrew. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Jesus just so happened to be a Jew. It's all Jewish conspiracy. You see what I'm saying? If the Quran has never been revealed and it's the most holy book, why it's got the first five books of Moses? If the Bible is so holy, why it's got the first five books of Moses? And we don't supposed to go by the Old Testament. Wait a minute, this is an oxymoron. You got a fucking Bible that you tell everybody who ain't a Christian they need to go by the fucking Bible. But yet in your Bible, you don't supposed to go by the first five books in it? That's, a, that's, that's ignorant. If, the, if we don't supposed to go by the Old Testament, Wait a minute, hold on. The first five books of your Bible is the foundation of your book. How the fuck are you not going to go? That means your book is falsehood because the Old Testament is your fucking Bible. See this conspiracy? So I was talking to Walter Williams, and he made mention, which is something I do know, that the Greeks and the Romans and all them, they had languages which was they caught, which they, they inherited from the black people, the Minoans in Greece and the Etruscans in Rome, and these people, and they later ain't no Europeans that came in who couldn't talk and learn the language. And then when they went into Kemet, that, and he said the same thing, because I did know, because I put it on some of my tapes, that the Egyptians tra took 100 years to translate Metaneta into Greek, Latin, Coptic, and even some Hebrew stuff at the Temple of Isis, at Temple of Dinner, Temple of Isis, the Temple of Esna, the Temple of Komombo. It took them 100 years to translate these things into these texts because they, they knew that their religion, they knew that Metaneta was going to fall in the ruins and then people wouldn't learn it for a thousand years. So they had to transfer a certain amount of things into Arabic and um, Arabic, translate things into uh, Greek, into uh, Latin and the, and the language of the surrounding area. This is one thing, so I, I talked about it on my tape about the 100 years they translated all this, but he gave me an interesting scenario which makes a lot of sense. He said they had languages, but none of them had scripts. And the ancient Egyptians literally went in and created a script for Arabic. Because these people couldn't write, they couldn't, they couldn't have a script. So the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Camites created a script for Arabic. They created a script for, for Coptic. They created a script for Greek. They created a script for Latin. You see what I'm saying? For Latin. Uh, Aramaic. And all these scripts that you have in the ancient world later on that you actually have that exist today, they were all created by the Camites so that they could translate stuff in the scripts, Metaneta, so it can be preserved. Because they knew that the Metaneta was going to be fall, fall in ruin. So that's the same thing happening here with, 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 with Het Heru. Het Heru was not worshipped for a thousand years. So what happened is, is these energies have to mm, take me out to the ballpark, <laughs> buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. <laughs> 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 they, they knew that they had to, that it was going to fall in ruin, so the energies, when those energies are not worshipped, they have to go to other places, whereas the Lakshmi continued to worship, be worshipped, because Lakshmi comes from pre-dynastic Egypt when it was the Kushites. The Dravidians are what, Indus Kush? That's the pre-dynastic Egyptians, so that stuff traveling on up into India. Now there's a reason why the Egyptians or the Camites, if you notice on their temples, they don't have a lot of sexual things and a lot of embrace. There's a reason why. So now we know the real reason between the war from the pre-dynastic and the dynastic. What had happened was is this. The pre-dynastic Egyptians had what is called sex tantric cults. And that taught you all the stuff about the tantric, and that was the most advanced stuff. They even had a one where the priest, the priestess, it was a right of the goddess to stick her hand up the man's ass and massage his prostate gland and open up the perineum. 
And later on, after they overthrew the priesthood, the men start doing it with their dicks. But every so, every season or so, the woman, they would do it to the teenage boys, and then they would do it, then the, then the women, they would do it to the men. See, they, look, they did a thing on prostate cancer, and they found out in the homosexual community that the guys who took it up the butt uh, had them a prostate gland massage, they didn't come down with prostate cancer. Because the prostate gland is the male's G spot. Now, there's a way you can do this shit sensibly, and that's the perineum. Because uh, the dookie shoot ain't happening for me. I ain't doing no dookie love. You no know, butt plug. It's the perineum, which is directly under the scrotums. It's a point, and the woman can massage the perineum. No, the man can massage the perineum. Now, for you women, what you suppose that the women in ancient Kemet used to stick their hand up the man's butt and massage the prostate gland. You see what I'm saying? Number one, it opens up some dimensions, and number one, they didn't get the prostate cancer. Number two, prostate cancer basically now is coming from, that was a rite of the goddess. Because even Jean de Rest out of, out, of, out, of, out of France, he said, when I studied the pre-dynastic stuff, they always talk about these rites that they had, but they would never mention what they were. They were tantric rites that we now pick up in India. You see, so, um, th so they used to massage the males prostate gland, even through the perineum, but if the, she went in the man, it was the woman's, it was, it was a woman's thing to massage that, massage that. Now what is, the prostate gland becomes basically inflamed or uh, cancer based on two things. Number one, when the black man goes to the hospital, there's two things, when the black man goes to the hospital based on prostate trouble, it is the law, it is by the United States law that they have to cut you. And once they cut you, you we, we won't work no more. There's two things, there's prostate cancer and there's an enlarged prostate gland. Well, the enlarged prostate gland can be treated, they can shrink that. But when the black man goes in with the, and then there's a prostate cancer where they gotta cut you. Well, when the black man goes in, they automatically say, we gotta cut you. Cause they're trying to stop your wee wee. Whereas the white man, they'll give him treatment if it's not cancerous. Cancerous, they gotta cut you. When the white man, they'll give him treatment and shrink it. Black man, you always gotta do that. But the key here is, is the, what's really causing the prostate cancer is brief underwear. Brief underwear. You got on Fruit of the Looms, it's brief underwear. If you notice all ancient things, they either had rows or when they did wear pants, it was stuff would hang down. You see what I'm saying? And fruits and everything off that comes off the trees, nuts and fruits, and why do you think they call them nuts? What does fruits do? They hang off the tree. So it gives uh, the nutrients from the vines, the energy to flow in, but it's the same thing with your scrotums. You see what I'm saying? Your balls. The, the, the brief draws got your shit all honked up, and the only reason why you got brief draws is for the white man to give the appearance of having a penis. That's what it's for. It makes no sense at all. So the brief draws is what causes prostate cancer, or uh, pro prostate cancer, as well as for you ones that's not, just for, 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 for you that's having problems orgasming, Quit wearing panties. <laughs> Quit wearing panties. That's white people shit. You having problems orgasming and having all kind of problems with the shit down there? Quit wearing panties. Get you some Don Quiet. That's some good shit for the pussy. Some Don Quiet. And quit wearing them panties. And I love oh. All that shit, but I'm just trying to say, that's for white folks. Uh, it might look cute, but it, you, your body does not breathe in the stuff you wear in them drawers. That's when you get all the yeast infections and bread things and all, all kind of shit like that. Quit wearing them drawers. But the reason why you got a lot of things that's going on and stuff even with the fibroid tumors and all that, because shit is back up. And something as simple as 
the underwear and the drawers and stuff like that. But men, you can't wear the brief drawers. They even put pork in the band. Uh, fruit of the looms and all those. So cause it because it is astro fields and they can bring down the black man's astro field or astro energy around the penis area by putting pork in the drawers because basically these areas are very self-rejuvenating. You know what I'm talking about? You can have some rough sex one night and say, oh, I think I hurt myself. And then by the next night, should be healed. It's the fastest healing thing on the, some of y'all that remember that shit. It's the <laughs> fastest healing thing going. And you, you know, you can say, oh, damn, I done, I done went a little too rough. And I done split some shit up. And then the next, next night, I'm not after next, it's healed. You see what I'm saying? It's healed. It's, it's healed. Now, so we got to teach our people these, so the ancient, so, so the Typhonian, we'll get back into some of that good stuff in a minute, but the Typhonian Egyptians were your tantric cults that taught all that male reproductive and the sexual and all that. So now, the pre-dynastics, these people could look into the future and they say, now look, we're going to have problems with all this kind of thing of people in sexual embrace and teaching the people all the sex thing on the monumental walls. They knew that other cultures that was going to later come up in there, they were going to have invasions for a thousand years. And those people coming in there, they were going to have problems with seeing all of that sexual thing which you're supposed to have, and they would have torn down all the monuments. So they made a choice. They had a big war a lot of times on sexual practice, and the, and the Typhonians went on up into Babylonia, Samaria, what you would call that particular thing, and, and later on, the advanced cults, basically traveled on into India. And that's your pre-dynastic Egyptians. And they preserved the Kama Sutra and the mass techniques of the sexual tantric things. You see what I'm saying? Of the sexual tantric things. You see, the, 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 but they knew that they would be isolated up there. The, the, the people who conquered them was the British in the 1800s, and by that time the British, they were into, hey, let's try to learn all we can. Because they had gone through a couple of years of masonry and the whole thing with the Moors. But early on, they knew that none of those temples would survive, would have survived. Look at look what they did with the ones that they had. They had one little face of Mim. You know, Mim is the, the god with the penis sticking out. In the, and most of them are chiseled off most of the temples. But even other things, they defaced so much in Egypt. So that's why the dynastic cult survived in India. Yeah. Uh -huh. Even the, yeah, the Sphinx, but even the, but I'm talking about even on the sexual thing. This, if they blow off noses, they would really have problems with this. People who, especially cults that would later on come in and they were taught that their spirituality is to be against sex. You see what I'm coming from here? To 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 be against against sex. But the dynastic cults, um, they had different sexual practices and things like that. Um, uh, 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 um things like that. Y'all all right? Now let me do one thing right quick. Because what we got to do is we always dealing with time. Let's do a question and answer, then jump back into the lecture, because I want to get some questions on some feedback. This is the way we're doing things now, and all, because I don't want people to leave, and we can jump back in the lecture. We do some stuff like that. What's that? What was that about that those Atlanta murders? Yeah, children. Okay, it's interesting. The Atlanta murders were, was about interferon. Interferon is, was the most was the most expensive thing on the planet. There's like a million dollars a vial back then. And it's supposed to be this healing thing and all this stuff that has come out of the testicles of the genitals of black people, of, of black children. And that's what that was about. Also, your first inception of your melatonin programs that they have laid on these melatonin pills. All that came from the Atlanta child murders. As a matter of fact, in 1996, a sister came to one of my lectures. And she came up in the, in the, in, 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 during the intermission, and she said, um, they came and got me to see one of my daughters. And I heard this before. She said, they came and got me to see my daughter. And she was still living, and she looked like she was 90 years old. Now, she told me that in 1996. So they didn't kill them all outright. It's just like Aaliyah. Aaliyah, what they did with her, is the same thing that Quaker Mutua talks about in his thing, where he talks about they can get the energy of a young girl and put them in the bed with an old man and they can draw her energy. Aaliyah, what they did with Aaliyah is although they sacrificed it, they did the movie Akasha, which means black substance in, 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 um, and it's also a goddess in India and in Africa. 
they, they got Aaliyah, they didn't really kill her right off. What they did was is they took Aaliyah, Aaliyah and they was doing sex rituals with her for maybe about a year or two after she so-called supposedly died. You know, as a matter of fact, the sister I'm with, she got this thing where a lot of dead people show up complaining to her when, she, when they die. So she said Aaliyah visited her and was telling her about this. But it makes a lot of sense now. So they do all kinds of uh, stuff like that um, um, uh, with, with, with the whole Atlanta child murder. As a matter of fact, there's a cheap movie called Red Ink. It's called Red Ink. And in that movie, the, 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 the guy says the same thing. They say, we saw one of these, uh, it was a woman or a guy in the movie said, we saw one of the children. They were still living, but they looked like they were 70 years old. So they were doing these experiments. Now the scene has shifted. Because no more, remember they caught the SARS, the SARS was going on out in, in Iraq. The word SARS come from, it's another word. One of the names for Osiris is called SARS. Uh, SARS. Uh, the SARS mean the Osiruses. And they said we can, all of a sudden, they said we could cure the SARS a week after the war ended, and they said interferon. So they're using this interferon again, but see, now they don't have to experiment with the inner city children here. They interferon, they got wars going on on Africa where the average age of the soldiers are seven years old and eight and nine. So therefore, they get them killed, and they're taking all that interferon and, like I said, the melatonin thing that's going on and all. So all of that, those deaths that you see in the 75,000 Africans dying a month in Africa is not based on AIDS. They're using all that for the melanin research and the melatonin programs. You see what I'm saying? And all this in the, in the melatonin programs, they're doing that now. You see, um, so this is this is what's going this is what's going on over there. You see, so that's what that whole research thing was. It was for all different types of things. Even crack research came out of that because the crack was laced with something. When they gave even the niggas to cook the cocaine down the crack, it was already laced with uh, um, amino acids. Which is what you got. Now let me shut down. Now let me give you some things right, right quick. Don't take the flu shot this now. Now, for this winter, this is what white folks is taking. And this this is what they taking. They've been taking this for a while. It's called emergencies. Anybody seen these? Emergencies. This is, this is the vitamin C. You got all your vitamin C's in here. A 32 mineral compounds. And they're taking this, the emergencies. You take, so we I've been taking two of these with some power aid. Woo. <laughs> so this, 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 this. So they've been taking these emergencies. This is what you take for immune system. Now, there was a little sister in, when I was doing a lecture in Virginia, a little sister got sick. And they gave, we gave her some emergencies, and in, 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 in 45 minutes, she was well. So this is a, a multiple vitamin C's and B complex. It's an emergency. You can get them at GNC. You can get them at the health food stores. And this is all what white folks been taking. And they, was, they, 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 they caught on, and they was taking they was the individual packs, and they started selling them by the boxes. Get you some emergencies. I should sell them, too. And, huh? I should sell them. Okay. Well, I mean, there's several things you can... Right out. But how much is it though? How much? Nine dollars. Okay. okay. Well, that's yeah, well, okay. That's several things. I'm just saying this is the, this is the little quick fix, of the of, of the emergencies and all, and it's also an energy booster. But this is what white folks are taking, emergency. Huh? Yeah. What it is is these here. You can take these. Take two of these in the morning, and, and you know, and keep your hands washed, and you won't catch nothing. You see what I'm saying? You won't catch nothing. You see, uh, uh, or you can mix up some of elixir, which is uh, <laughs> Canadian whiskey and gin. And mix that up and call an old teacher, T.H. or Shayola. And I just call them up and say, whatever, and they just go to work. You know, they done, they done did some amazing shit. They done healed some shit on me. They, they, they done healed some shit on me that was better than what it was in 1982. And stuff like that. Now that's the other high level on getting on this type of thing here. You can pretty much heal anything with with with, with the spirits on what you're doing. And I'll give you some more questions right quick. What's that? Mm -hmm. uh, Uncle Winfrey. 
Uh huh. Some time ago, she went over to South Africa and started this um, yeah. school for girls. But I, I want to know what's really behind that. Well, um, they really can let them do things because they're very minor. They're very minor. See, they really, at this particular time, they're looking at black people. Any black people doing anything that ain't doing nothing with some magic, they pretty much say this is, is, is very minor. And so that's what was happening with the whole Oprah Winter thing. You know, she's, you know what I'm saying? Uh, she's, you know, she's done been in the bed with them for years. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't nothing really to her. You see? And all, uh, you know, and Gail is a girlfriend and all kind of thing like that and all. You know, so it's a whole lot of things that's going on. See, there's a whole sexual ring going on with a whole lot of things like that thing. And so, you know, you know, like all of Hollywood, all the rappers now are all gay and stuff like that and all, you know. You know, I, you know, just about all of them and stuff like that and all, you know. So it's a whole sexual ring going on, but that's, that's a part of how they get to, get to what you call it. How they able, because, you know, Puff Daddy, you know, they had him on the Internet with men back in 97. And stuff. So the way you get some of these deals is you got to go and you know, you know, do some dookie love and all kind of stuff like that. And so that's a whole nother world and stuff. You know, um, on that particular level. Give me some questions right quick. Mm -hmm. um, take Michael Jackson go to jail. Take Michael Jackson go to jail. Two things on this. We'll call it both ways. Um. They gunning for him. Now, it could be like the OJ thing. There's a certain amount of energy. It's just like they had two people dying. They had Luther was dead. And the prayer visuals and all the shit that they did, black people brought him back. He may never sing again because he fucked up, but at least he lived. Same time, the attention was not given to Barry White at the same time. A lot of people didn't even know about it. They had a stroke the same time and he died. So it's like the O.J. thing. The O.J. thing was, it didn't matter whether O.J., uh, whether they wanted him to go and they had it all set up. In black people's mind, we didn't want to see no black man go to jail after white folks vilified him for a year. No matter how many white girls or whatever. We knew he didn't do that shit. Come on. Only when white folks convinced you after a couple of years, because they ain't going to never forget it. You see. That they did it, so that, that you know, you think, oh, maybe he did. You know he didn't do no shit like that. Like they say, kill two people and catch the red eye. <laughs> you know, and don't get no blood nowhere. It's bull. But black people didn't want him to go, and as a result, on, on, that's a great day you need to celebrate, because it wasn't about OJ. On October the 3rd, 1995, which would be 10 years, that was a great, I remember that day, I jumped to the damn ceiling. <laughs> but October is 10, and 3, that's 13, that's our lucky number. And the white man's unlucky number. It's the number of Sirius, the 13th man, which is the pineal gland, which you call the 12 disciples. You see what I'm saying? It's the pineal gland, it's the, it's the center of the zodiac. It's all that shit that's ours. And so, on that day, black people won. So, if it gets intense, see what they, they, they if they see they, they're real being real careful on how they broadcast things now. We don't get the same kind of OJ coverage. So, if black people want him to not go to jail, he won't, because our energy is like that now. You see, the, uh, all is some damn dis distraction. You see what I'm saying? Like uh, your boy said uh, on on his on his um, Showtime special, um, Dave Chappelle. So the white man called him and said, hey, man, this war ain't going like we thought it was going. Morale is low. The economy is down. You got to suck off another kid. You got to suck off another white boy. And you see, them niggas know some things because the white man tell them what to say. They put it right out there that a lot of this is distraction. They can distract you by zipping stuff like that. It's not by mistake that a, a bomber goes into the, into the barracks, into the mess hall, right during Christmas and blow up the mess hall over in Iraq. Right. Right. It's not by mistake that Bin Laden, they hear from this motherfucker like a damn right. HBO special. <laughs> he, he shows up right before the election. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And all, uh, they're not going to catch him because, hell, he probably got a room in the White House. They probably laugh. They do rituals like that. 
I, you see? I read the newspaper uh, February of this year that bin Laden was in Pakistan, that he was supposed to have been in Pakistan. Look, he, he, in jail. he's in probably, jail in Pakistan. Oh, no, man. That, that bin Laden is a bush boy. When they set that shit up, bin Laden probably staying on Bush estate. Eating caviar. You know what I'm saying? And doing stuff like that. They do shit like that as a joke. It's a ritual. They're all in this thing together. Let me give you a rich writer. Let me show you. Okay, look. Let me show you how they run in a, a, a pimp job on people. They went over there to Iraq and didn't find a damn bullet. Didn't find a bullet. So then they came and said, well, we got Saddam Hussein. And the people bought this shit. <laughs> but they know that we don't have, it used to be a three-year attention span. We don't have nothing but a one-month attention span. We don't even know what went on right before the war. Let me show you the damn, they're laughing at us. Let me show you what I'm talking about. They said, well, we got Saddam Hussein. Now, they done had him for a year. Okay, now check this out. Wasn't it Bush that came on TV three days or four days before the war and told Saddam Hussein he had 48 hours to, 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 to no, not to turn himself in. They didn't say that. He said he had 48 hours to get out of Iraq. Now, I'm trying to look at the mentality. Now, now, now you hear what I'm saying now. You got to think for a minute. They just told you that we didn't find no weapons, but we got Saddam Hussein. But what did Bush say that we got 48 hours to get out? That means that, look at the mentality. You mean to tell me before the war, you was going to let the motherfucker go? And now you ain't found a bullet. You saying we got Saddam Hussein. You gave him 48 hours to be free. Do you see that? Do you see the mentality on what? The, the, do you see? The horror on how our minds don't even function. He, but see we, don't, see, we, see, we don't record history. He came on and said, you got 48 hours to get out of Iraq, and you're free. And then they didn't find no bombs because they didn't go over there. Then he said, well, we got Saddam Hussein. Motherfucker, you was going to let him go. You see? The, you see, the, you see? And yet they got a 1,000 dig sites over there. And I got a picture. They sequestering people. Most of those people over there are blue black. I got a picture of the general people in, not in the cities, but in the towns outside of the cities. And you think you was in doggone West Africa. Not telling people that. You see, so it's all a joke. You see, it's all a joke. What's that? Mm -hmm. Who? Neil Bush. Who? Oh, 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 yeah, all that stuff is the whole thing, all that stuff and all. But you got to realize that this is the thing about Bush. Go get a movie called My Fellow Americans, and it's a movie about a dumb and stupid Dan Quayle character that ended up. These ex-presidents started running for their lives because they didn't know who was trying to kill them. And it was the dumb and stupid person who was trying to kill them. Let me explain the thing about Bush. Bush goes under what is called a scapegoat clause. It's a trickster. They make you think he's dumb and stupid. And it's a way to make you think that you're in charge because you get a chance to talk shit about the president and you think it is dumb and stupid. You see what I'm saying? And one minute he appears brilliant, and then another day later he appears stupid. That's all a trickster figure. That's a form of deception. You see, right, it's the same thing. And, and the play the fool, it's the drunken master. You see? And that's what this whole thing is about. It's a ritual. It's a ritual. He can be president like anybody else can because the presidency is not run from here. The president is run from Britain. Now, wait a minute. Now, hold on now. They say they went to war with... America and Britain went to war, this Revolutionary War, and 12 men with no shoes on kicked the British Army's ass. Now, this is the same British Army that went around the motherfucking world and conquered the entire globe. And yet some people on some damn donkeys and no shoes on, minute men, going to kick the British in the ass, and you believe that shit? It's all set up. Now, if they are free from Britain, why is your court system a British system? 
your monetary system based on a British system. You see what I'm saying? Um, your legal system is British. You see what I'm saying? And all parts of government is based on a British system. That's because this never was, an, uh, this never was a, a, a break away from Britain. It was an annex of Britain. And they still run the shit. Am I stupid? Who went to war with them? Didn't they drop a bomb? Okay. They supposed to have blown up the World Trade Center, blew up the Pentagon, and they couldn't find no plane parts to this day. It was the missile. You know, so, and, and they supposed to blew up this thing, but yet, who went to war with Afghanistan first? Was it Britain or was it America? Oh yeah, you see, we don't think. We don't record nothing in history. They banking on you never keeping your shit like an elephant. With me, once it go up in this motherfucker, it don't leave. Britain went to war with them. What is Britain going doing going to war with Afghanistan before America went to war? Because it's all, you see what I'm saying? That's the father of this shit. So what they have done is, is this. This is what's, what's going on here. They decided that America is, was an experiment that British had so they could find out what works and what don't work with people so-called governing themselves in a highly capitalistic society. And they chronicle all that for the last two something hundred years. And basically what they did was, is they made, they, to fortify Europe. They're saying that after January, the, 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 the dollar won't be accepted in Japan or something. And it's gonna be the Euro dollar. So in so many words, what it is, is they say now, now they're saying now we can shut down America because it's not about America, it's about Europe. So they're saying now America's impure. That's why they're letting all the Mexicans in. And because you don't realize one thing about the Europeans. They don't mix. The Russians don't go and fuck the French. And the Germans, you see what I'm saying, screwing the Irish. But over here, if you got white, you just white, you fuck everybody. They don't mix their bloodlines like that. They're tribal. So they're saying America, uh, Russia is pure. And just like Francis Cress Wilson say, that after World War II, they say the envy of the white world is Germany. They say Germany is 98% white in unmixed bloodlines. You see what I'm saying? And that's what that shit was about. Pure. So they say America is just a, see, they say that the, the white folks over here who can't trust, trace their family back to those 5,000 people that rule the world. They are all dumped into the pot of squalor. Unmixed seeds. Why do you think the white girls are walking around with booties now big as hell? Because they're saying that, the, they're saying that when they really look up, they say the gene pool is so mixed with nigger, <laughs> Native American, Mexican. There have been a lot of screwing in the cotton, and so they're saying the gene pools after so many generations, they say all this shit over here is a bunch of niggas, so they're going to shut it down. Also, they say they got to isolate the messianic strain. Now, who is the messianic strain? The messianic strain, according to the Egyptians and according to the Kabbalistic lure, that they would have a mixture of what is just called the great mixing bowl. They say that the tribes of Israel is actually the tribes of Africa. But they were separated of these ancient tribes. So they said that those tribes were supposed to come together in alchemy and make what is called the purified stone or the perfected stone or the smooth ashlar. So we went through slavery spiritually. And what happened was is it mixed several African tribes and nations together. And the ones in America is the most mixed. That's why you're the most creative. Because in you, you got, they say if you go to the Caribbean, they might have two strains. Or two, because they drop them off large. Whereas us, they drop them off small, small and they mixed them up and then they had courses of mixture of all types of individuals. So as a result, they say, you look at the voodoo. Now, Milo Regard's book, Secrets of Voodoo, they had 14 different African nations that went into making voodoo. By... 2000, Reginald Crosley's book, Voodoo Quantum Leap, 
it was over 25 different nations that made voodoo. Now, you take the religion and look at the embodiment of a human, the ones over here, because they dropped them off, we got everything in our bloodline. So they said that based on what the Egyptians say, that there would be a group of Egyptians in America in the last days. Then they say, well, we got the bloodline now. Isolate the bloodline. So the bloodline, they say isolate the blood. It's the whole African nation, but they got one bloodline that is a bunch of people that unlike anything on the planet. Plus, you got to realize another thing. Now, I'm going to drop this on you. Now, you got to understand alchemy to understand what I'm talking about. In the history of the priesthood, in some Atlantean part, way back before Egypt, they had a priesthood that broke away, and they was trying to create a Christ by mixing bloodlines together. That's what was trying to create the Cusacks Hatteracks that they talk about in Doom. Oh, that's right. Superman, a super being. Oh. So they, 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 they went, but they botched the job and grafted it too much out of the original strain, and you got the white man. But that was an experiment, an alchemical experiment by priesthoods. Then later on, we get the Yaku story, which is just a, 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 it's just a, a, a simulated mythology of a much elaborate thing. But they were trying to create a super being, but they botched the job. They botched the job. But it's like the X-Men say, it takes years and years. Because alchemy is taking something original and making something new. So they created the white man. Now, so he's something that is abnormal. Now, the next phase here is you got this new creation of all these multiple African tribes in a slave that was even bred to even be stronger and all this type of stuff. And then one little abnormal prodigal mixed in, which is the white man, and you got something that is superhuman now. It is because of that, whatever that original particle that they mixed it is by itself is nothing but some, uh, uh, a germ. But with us, it made, a, it made something. The nigga is the most unique motherfucker on the planet. I'm not talking about the African. I'm not talking about the Caribbean. I'm talking about straight up. And you got to admit, 